So this video is to help you revise reflex actions and to go over the structure of the spinal cord. So a reflex action is an automatic response to a stimulus. So it's an unthinking response to a stimulus. And a classic example in medicine is when a doctor would hit the tendon just below the knee with a rubber mallet and the leg would kick out. Another example is we've all done it. We've pricked our finger with a pin. And the first thing that happens is that your hand pulls away. Now, the big thing about reflex actions and what makes them unique is that your brain is not involved in deciding the action. It's merely been informed of the action. So it's not a thinking response. It's an unthinking response to a stimulus. So reflex actions are really important for keeping us safe. They're a protection mechanism. It means that we can respond very quickly to potential danger and take evasive action. Reflex actions are controlled by reflex arcs within the spinal cord. The spinal cord together with the brain makes up the central nervous system and all the nerves that link into and out of the central nervous system make up the peripheral nervous system. So this is a transverse section of the spinal cord and it's really important that you can draw and label it and put in arrows where necessary as well. So let's start at the centre. You can see this circle. This is called the central canal and that's filled with a liquid called cerebrospinal fluid. That liquid has a protective function and also is there for carrying nutrients as well. And it runs the whole way from the base of the spinal cord all the way up to the brain. So then you have this grey matter and it's arranged in a H shape or a butterfly shape and it contains or is made up of cell bodies and dendrites. Surrounding the grey matter is white matter that's made up of axons only and axons are usually covered in myelin sheets which contain a lot of fat and that's the reason for the white appearance. So attached to the spinal cord the whole way along are spinal nerves and they attach to the spinal cord by means of two roots. So you can see on either side here there's spinal nerves linking in and then as soon as they come to enter the spinal cord they branch into two roots. One of the roots at the back is called the dorsal root and it has a dorsal root swelling and the roots at the front are known as the ventral roots. The dorsal roots are where the sensory neurons enter the spinal cord and then the ventral roots are where the motor neurons exit the spinal cord to carry the information down that spinal nerve to the effectors, the muscles or the glands. So just think of the sensory neurons entering through the dorsal root, the back door, back for dorsal. And then the motor neurons are exiting through the ventral root. So they're vacating, V for vacating through the ventral root, through the front of the spinal cord. The spinal cord and the brain is covered in these protective membranes known as the meninges. And there are three of them. And in between each one is this liquid cerebrospinal fluid. So when we discuss reflex arcs for our exams, we're talking about the role played by three neurons in carrying out reflex actions. So the sensory neuron sends the impulse into the spinal cord, into the back via the dorsal root. Then we have the interneurons that will pass that impulse towards the front of the spinal cord to a motor neuron. And then we have the motor neurons that will send the impulse out of the spinal cord towards some type of muscle or gland and it leaves via the ventral root. So let's go through the whole process. So a stimulus is detected by receptor cells and this results in an electrical impulse being sent into the spinal cord via a sensory neuron. And you remember these enter through the dorsal root. So within the spinal cord, this impulse is generally then passed on to an interneuron. The interneuron will pass the impulse to the front of the spinal cord to a motor neuron and the impulse will leave the spinal cord via a motor neuron and motor neurons leave via the ventral root. The impulse reaches an effector such as a muscle or a gland and results in some type of action. The brain is made aware of the action either at the same time or after a slight delay. So as always, you know, these videos are oversimplified and there is much more detail involved in reflex actions. But if I was you now, I might go and revise the brain. Can you pick out these labels on a diagram and give an account of something that's connected with each one? The best of luck with all of your exams.